Hello gamers! Have you wanted to try out a new immersive airplanes mod? Well, look no further, because this is the full overview of the immersive aircrafts mod. In this mod, there are unique things such as aircrafts. That's the whole stick. And before we cover all these aircrafts, know that these are the, the five. You got the, the main airship, cargo airship, then you got the gyrodyne. This one is manual powered, so it doesn't run on fuel. The biplane, classic plane, and then the quadrocopter. But first, before we go over the five placeable aircrafts and the, the other things, I'll tell you what they are. There's weapons, four aircraft weapons. We've got heavy crossbow, simple upgrade. Rotary cannon, this uses gunpowder to fire, this uses arrows. The telescope, this is just like a regular telescope, but onto your plane. And then we've got the bomb bay. This one just drops TNT, but not at the price of one TNT, and it uh, just does heavy damage. It doesn't break any blocks. Now, over here, we've got the five crafting components. So you'll need to craft these to make the airplanes. And then you'll notice that there's nine aircraft upgrades. And these are things that you can put inside of each aircraft to make them better. So first we'll cover the components. So to make an engine, uh, this is a pretty important part. You need a, a, a boiler, a blast furnace, piston, cobblestone, in this specific order and a crafting table. And to make a sail, you just need six white carpets, and three string in this formation. Now for a propeller, it's just five iron ingots in this formation. That's a propeller. Pretty simple recipe. Then for the boiler, you'll notice that engine used a boiler here. The boiler is just seven copper ingots and a furnace. And then for the hull, this is used to make the shapes of it. Certain of them use different, different amounts. It's just three wood on top and below, and then three iron ingots. Now we'll go over to the crafting recipes for the specific ones. So we'll take a look here and you'll notice that airship is a component of the cargo airship. So we'll start with the airship, which is just six sails, two hulls, and an engine, one from one. So simple over there. Now this one, if you were to fly it around, Normally it would require fuel. If you're in creative mode, it does not require fuel. I'll go over the fuel consumption at the end of the video. But as you can see, this one's pretty slow, but it's got a good storage space of 12 slots and it can use full stacks. And you'll notice that there's a banner slot, which can be used for putting a banner on the side. And then if you get out using R. And if I were to grab a die, let's grab, we'll grab red. Red's a good die. Not that. Red dye. And then I would put red dye. It would t dye the, f the f sort of sails that red color. And you can use, you'll notice that sort of middle indicator on my, on my hotbar there. That's the propeller speed. And that's, you'll only really notice that on the biplane, I must say. But that, that just helps you move around. So it's, it's a fairly slow movement. Park it back down, but there's this is a lot more control. And these are the upgrade slots. So the airship has three upgrade slots and one weapon slot, and only has one fuel slot. But obviously you could put fuel in here. Anyway, I'll land it back down, and you'll notice on the right, above where my hunger would be, if I were in survival mode, is tool durability. So when you left click as in to get or right click as to get back in. You repair it and you'll notice that and you'll notice that now it's back up to 10 little wrenches there which shall take out the, the stuff oh and you can see it sort of rev up there as i get in now the cargo airship is the exact same deal that's weird why didn't i get in there we go and it, it dies the sails does it this one Flies at about the same speed, a little bit slower, I might say. I'll, I'll do a test to show the exact results after. But this one only has four upgrade slots and no weapon slots. 
So this one, in theory, could have just a bunch of... One more thing to make go faster, but no weapons. And, like, four times the amount of storage. Actually, you'll notice that this is four by four. So 16 slots. And there's five of them. Which comes down to... 80 total inventory slots. Which is much more than the player has. It's one of the most efficient storage cells in the game. So I'll go park this back down. And you'll see that this one, you can have great control with this. You can sort of land it right exactly where you want to. You can go backwards, forwards with it. So lots of control here on this one. But when you land, it does sort of jiggle a little bit. That's not to be worried about. Now this one, the Gyrodyne. This one is completely manual, so you won't use any fuel while driving this. And it's just made with a propeller, a sail, top and bottom, and hull, left and right. So when you get in this, now this one also doesn't need much of a runway. You can see I just barely go to the edge of that block. And once it says minimum rotor speed reach, ready for takeoff, then you can actually just fly with lots of control here. And this was really controllable. You, you won't lose that power. I'm going to try it in survival mode after, but that, I'm, I assume it consumes hunger instead. As you can see, this has a fairly durable. You can fly around with this. Just do know that when you are aiming, let's say, the crossbow, and it's um, right-click the flyer, or whatever you use to place blocks, and that will only fire straight ahead. So if I go into first person, I can't aim it down or up. It only goes straight ahead directly in front of where it's facing. I do like to be piloting in third person. I like to play in third person. But uh, we'll see the benefits and the negatives of playing in third, in first person, actually. I didn't show that off on the... I'll show that off when I get to the weapons. But certain weapons, you have a hard time seeing when they are loaded or you're trying to aim. So it's easier in third person. Now for this one, you see it revs up in the center there. It's just one engine, four propellers, and four bamboo. Now this one, great maneuverability, just all directions. But this one, it's not particularly fast and only has one upgrade slot and one weapon slot and six little inventory slots. So it's generally a lot worse in almost every aspect compared to the other ones, except for the fact that it is just good for building. Like, oh, I wanna build a little bit up here. Well, now I can build up here. Of course, you do it in the first person, you get a good view. You go, oh, I want to build here, here. So this one's just like, just like scaffolding, basically, but flying. It's a nice little piece. Now, the biplane. This one's crafted with a hull, an engine, or three hulls, sorry, an engine and a propeller. Now, I'm going to take this one over to the runway, because this one does need a runway. Now, here, I'll hit the space bar to rev up the propeller and get it going forwards. And then, you'll, these ones, the controls are inverted, so you have to put the S key, or down, to turn up in the plane. And you can left and right, A, turn left, D, turn right, that works normally. But inverted Y controls, where S to go up, and D to go down. And if you were to put a weapon in, you can also just change it out on the fly. And this is what it looks like with the banner in it. There is no die slot, you'll notice on this one. So just the banner and four upgrade slots, boost rockets, and fuel slot. Cover those specifically later with the upgrade section. But as you can see, this one makes it a little bit easier to aim. Like, let's say I'm, oh, I'm aiming straight. Oh, oh, but one thing to note is that if you want to fire, you have to have an open hand and left click. And you see, I took durability damage there because I landed a little bit hard on the ground. Because if I'm trying to aim at something on the ground, normally I'll try to come down to the ground. But it is it is hard to aim this one a little bit. But it's also it does allow a lot of maneuverability. And you do have to be careful flying at certain angles that don't work. Because if you do fly at the wrong angle, it will lose a little bit of speed. Likely due to air friction. And there is an upgrade which can mitigate that. Now we'll cover the upgrades. When you get out, it doesn't skid very far, you just repair it, but I just break it with one punch. Now, on to the upgrades. So, certain of them are very expensive, so we'll go over here to this one first, because it is expensive, the nether engine. 
and this one, and this one is cost a netherite ingot. So know that this one's really expensive, lots of nether items, nether bricks. This is this is a fairly easy one, you just have to go to the nether. And then there's a regular engine in there, but this one gives plus 30% fuel requirement and plus 40% engine power. So I'm assuming that that means that the fuel cost goes up in exchange for power, but we'll have to check because the eco engine takes away 75% of the fuel requirement and minus 20% of engine power. So the assumption on this one is that you lose a little bit of power to become more fuel efficiently. And now the steel boiler. This one, oh, I should craft, show the crafting recipe. And this one's just three gold, two slime, regular bricks, and an engine in the middle to sort of upgrade that engine into an eco engine. Now for the steel boiler, it's just a blast furnace and a boiler. And if you'll, you'll remember, the boiler is crafted using a furnace and seven copper ingots. And the engine is crafted steel with a steel boiler, blast furnace, pistons, and this. So this comes around the same cost of an engine and the steel boiler. The, don't forget about the seven iron ingots around. So total cost around 12 iron ingots. And this one gives plus 50% fuel requirement, so a lot more fuel, but 25% boost in engine power, and it's significantly cheaper than this other option here. Now, the enhanced propeller. So it's just a regular propeller, but it's got two more copper on the to add extra blades. So it's four more copper total. And this one gets rid of 75% air friction, or minus 75% air, air friction, which does not exactly translate to 75% air friction, I believe, but it is a significant amount. Now, industrial gears. This one's just a lever, three iron, three copper. And it just takes away 20% of the fuel requirement. So as you can see, some of these are just simple ones. Uh, the sturdy pipes. Let me just... Uh, my bad, I, I didn't... <laughs> so sturdy pipes is just three copper and two iron. And it just adds 10% ingot er, engine power. So I'll put that up on the board. That's my fault. I'm sorry, everyone. But that is the sturdy pipes plus 10% engine power. Now here, the gyroscope. This one, minus 100% wind effect. So I'm not quite sure the difference between minus 75% air friction and minus 100% wind effect. But this one's crafted with a compass and two comparators. And then here we have hull reinforcement. So this one just adds 100% durability to your aircraft. We'll showcase well that what that'll work like. But anyway, it's three iron on the top, three iron on the bottom, and the three hulls in the middle. And if you'll remember, hulls have the crafting recipe of three iron and three wood on each top, so six total. So this comes out to 18 logs and three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, fifteen iron total for a a hull reinforcement. Now, improved landing gear. Here, it's four coal and two iron, and it's got 50% takeoff speed. And now you'll find that for these four smaller ones, you don't need that takeoff speed because you can just take off in this spot. You saw me earlier. I just got in them, and then I took off right here. I took off right in this spot, and I landed right back here. But here, the biplane, you saw I made a runway for it. That's because the biplane really is the only one that needs this landing gear because it insignificantly increases that takeoff speed. Now we'll go over the weapons. Heavy crossbow. It's just a regular crossbow attached to the front. And one thing is on the airship, it will have one crossbow on each side. And that will... Uh, that will... Just wait, let me let me clear my inventory. Edit this part out. So on the airship, as you can see, it revs up pretty quick there. I have exactly 10 wrenches, but I add the hull reinforcement. Get out. And now it says four, but let's see what happens if I try to crash it a little here. Take some damage. 
I don't know why it says four. Let's try to break it, and it should go down one. Let's do some damage here. So like consistently, if I go up a little, then I take a rough landing. Takes a little bit of damage. It could be affecting the way that it gets damaged as well. You know what? I got a great idea. Let's let's shoot it with another airship. Actually, put down an airship. Fill this one with just regular arrows, and then fire. So we dropped a hull reinforcement. Okay, we'll, we'll place down another one. Put me out on top. And, oh, there we go. Now if I fire at it. Okay, just wait, I was too close. But let's see if I, I fire at it. It does instantly disappear. So it looks like the double heavy shot is pretty powerful. Let's go ahead and put in the... I'm not quite sure if hull reinforcement works entirely. You'll have to try this out with your friends if it actually increases it. But next, cargo airship. This one. Just know that there is no weapons you can put in here. And you can store a lot of stuff in it. But for this, for example, let's, let's say I want to do... The wind doesn't really seem to bother these airships, specifically. So let's say I put in minus 75% air friction. It's not that much of a difference, because it's just it's such a smaller, slower moving. But if I were to put, let's say, put some engines in. Oh, those are just regular engines. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Those are supposed to be netherite engines. But let's say I put in steel bo steel boilers then. Oh. oh, it looks like you can only put in one of each type. So you have to pick and choose your upgrades. Looks like I can't go, oh, I want three steel boilers. So I can only have one. So it's plus 25% engine power. Let's say I go plus 10, minus 20% fuel requirement. And we'll go her hull durability. And I can fly around. This is noticeably quicker, but just that plus 35% engine power. Alright, and then next, the quadricopter. This one, just one upgrade slot. I'm going to put in a steel boiler for now. Actually, no. We'll, we'll fly around without it first. But as you can see, this one, it's got lots of control. It's got a little bit of lean when you go forwards and backwards. Left and right. It's transition smoothly to those diagonals. Shift is to go down. Spacebar to go up. And then that's about it. That's all the controls for this one. And then R to get out. And I break it. One thing that you can do with these, actually, is you'll notice that when I press R to get out, I'm on top, and I can jump back in. And the thing is, when you're out of it, it gets repaired. Oops. So, let's say it took some damage, I'm flying, and then it took, and then I just get out of it while I'm still in the air, I can repair it, and then get back in. Now, we've covered the... Oh, the Gyrodon. This one is all manual power. It's got three upgrade slots. Three by six inventory slots. So 18 total inventory slots. So for this, we'll show off the... The rotary cannon. And you see, you can't use spacebar to push. You have to use W, basically. Left and right doesn't do much, S doesn't do anything, so you have to use W, you have to get a little bit of speed. Once you get that speed takeoff, you can actually you can actually land again, and then it'll take off right away. 
Now for this, I can fire third person. Make sure you have an open inventory slot though. And it fires where you look. Now this one is really good in first person because it does accurate, pretty accurately fire that rotary cannon where you're looking. And then if I were to switch to the heavy cannon, or the, sorry, the heavy crossbow, and just put, oh, and it does work with any arrow types. It doesn't light things up with spectral arrows. But you'll notice with this one, if I look up, look down, it doesn't particularly change the trajectory. It's got to be right where you're, you're actually flying. So if I were to hit this sheep, I'd have to get pretty close here. You'll notice that it goes up a little bit. So if I want to hit something, I have to actually come at it from pretty far away. Like if I want to hit that cow, I've got to hit almost from here. I'll go a little bit lower. And when you are moving forward, it does aim that trajectory just the tiniest little bit down. But it is pretty hard to aim. So this, this would take a skilled pilot or just driving and passerby. It looks pretty cool. It's completely... So if you don't have a lot of fuel, the Gyrodyne is absolutely the way to go. Personally, I quite like this one. Remember, this crafting recipe is just two sails, a propeller, and two hulls. So no engine even on this one. And this one, if I get out and I try to repair it, I can get back in. But you'll notice that I will still have to wind it up again after I get out. Now... Earlier I did say I was going to bring this up, I did forget, but in the airship, if you put in the rotary cannon, when you go into first person, it's all you can see. It does accurately shoot, you can see that it follows your mouse cursor, and it accurately shoots exactly where you're pointing, you just, you just can't see. And I'm normally in third person, so this makes it a little bit easier for me, but yeah, big vision block if you try to use that there. Let's uh, prepare the airship. Now. What I'm sure everyone's been waiting for, the biplane. The biplane in this bad boy. Did I cover this already? I think I did. Oh, no, no. I gotta show the weapons off in the biplane. So for this, put in the... Put in these upgrades. And, you know, where's the propeller? I misplaced the propeller. So we'll just use the sturdy pipes. This is plus 50% takeoff speed, steel boiler, gyroscope. So now you should be able to see that wind effect and takeoff speed really get out of here. Put in the crossbow. You know what? I'll fill this one up all the way with all this stuff, all the good stuff. Oh, there it is. Air friction. I'll switch that out after you get part way. Press the space bar, start this engine up. I got to take off much quicker that time than last time. Now you'll see I've got crossbow so it does shoot and you have to be careful you can, you can crash into entities you saw that where i took lots of durability damage just for hitting that cow i didn't even hit the ground now here yeah you have to be careful if you miss you gotta get out of the way and you have to remember your crossbows are on your sides took some damage there so i'll have to jump out prepare it spam that left click or right click and you can only get back in once it's fully repaired. Now you can see I'm flying again. It's got a good speed on it. And it is left click with the open hand to fire these the heavy crossbows. Now you can switch this crossbow out for telescope. I haven't shown this one off yet, but it's just you just look where your cursor is. Just like a regular telescope, if you had one in your inventory, it would do the exact same thing. Just zoom in. And then if I were to switch it out for the the bomb bag. Now I haven't actually shown this one off yet, but it drops bomb. This you all notice the biplane drops too in a forward direction. And boom. So this is great for bombing runs. You go, oh boom! Oh, oh bombs away! It does have a bit of a cooldown, so if you spam it, you'll see that's as far apart as I can go. But it does look like the uh, hitbox is going to lap. So, I guess not quite. Looks like there's a little bit of a gap, depending on how you're flying. But yeah, that does lots of damage, doesn't destroy any blocks. And you'll notice I've only used a, a few TNT. And that's because 
the bomb, bomb bay. So notice I'm at, I'll take it out, I'll put them in, I'll put one TNT in. One, two. So I got to fire three. I think there was one in there already. So now one, two. Yes. So you see each TNT that's launched out of the bomb bay is one actual fourth of a TNT block. So for the biplane, which launches two, it drops. It only costs one TNT to launch to twice, which shoots two TNT, which has a fair bit of damage. Now for the rotary cannon on here, where did it go? Oh, there it is. Rotary cannon. This one, it just shoots exactly where you're going. Let's go find some mobs. Uh, where did I go actually? That's why I like being in third person because I can see where I went. I think I really uh, came out of the map on this one. Yeah, because as you can see, I was just not paying attention there for a bit. I flew pretty far. So we'll fly towards this village. Now, this may not be the ethical thing to do, but we are going to shoot some villagers up. Now you'll notice if I come in a little bit, as you can see, I can fit in between these buildings here. I gotta be careful. Oh, it is fun to fly around. Oh, see, I, I hit something. I'm still not a very good pilot yet. Uh, oh. Yeah, I took some damage. We'll get out. Spam the heal button. I don't even need to go all the way, but I can rev this up. Start flying. Oh, look, an iron golem. Oh. Oh, I can make it through this gap. Yeah, so it looks like you can still make it through gaps, even if it looks like it's going to absolutely break your... Oh. Took me quite a bit, bit there to get out of that. But the thing is, actually, if you've got the rotary cannon, you don't have to be aiming at it. You can... Like, you'll notice I can't see anything. But if I were to aim over there, I can shoot over there. And you can shoot, you can shoot down as well. As you can see, doesn't damage my thing, still shoots. The problem is seeing where you're aiming. Like if I were to shoot at that iron golem over there, it's hard to see if I was hitting him. I personally, I quite like the bomb bay. It's just pretty simple, it's pretty expensive. But fly around third person, you go bombs away. Oh, I, I've used the wrong button. Remember, it is not it has to, you have to have an open hand and right click. You can't. Oh, I think that's right off. Boom. So it's not enough to kill an iron golem in one shot. Looks like I did quite a bit of damage to it. One more pass might be enough, actually. Oh, yeah. So the bombs killed an iron golem in like two bombing trips. So that's almost that's almost definitely going to one shot a player. Yeah, so the bomb bay is really strong. The heavy crossbow. It's actually really strong. You saw how it how it destroyed that plane in one shot, 10 hits, with the arrows. So I assume that it does really high damage to planes specifically, which would be great if you can get the dogfight going with other players. Um, the rotary cannon has the best aiming capabilities for actually shooting at us. Like it follows that cursor, so you can aim it a lot better. But it is hard to steer and aim at the same time, especially because there isn't a zoom. Like, if I were to get a telescope, I could zoom and then go, oh, there's there's something over there. But the thing is with the, the biplane, is that you actually can't slow down. You've got just one speed, and then if I try to fire at that villager there, I can't tell where I'm aiming. Because I don't know where it's going. But if I were to go, oh, I totally crashed that. Anyway, I'll fly back to base. All right, so we've returned back here. We've done a quick overview of all the ships and the guns, the components, and the upgrades. Now, what we're going to do is actually get into fuel types. So for fuel types, I'll, I'll explain it using airship first and then the biplane. And I'll show if the cargo airship uses air fuel more. Because remember, the gyrodone, Gyrodyne 
Remember, the gyrodyne does not consume fuel. I'll take one just in case. So, first off, we'll grab some coal. We'll grab some lava buckets. And we will grab some kelp blocks. We'll also grab some just regular oak planks and oak logs as well. Those are all pretty good fuel sources. With good efficiency. And now we'll test them out. Oh, also, I should grab some food. We'll grab golden carrots. That's the common one people use. I'll grab some regular ones too, though. So I'll grab grab some steak. And now we'll go to slash game mode. Survival. Now we are in survival. So first off, we'll try the gyrodyne. Now we've taken off. And I will time lapse to see how long it takes for food to go down. Now, one thing you may notice is that there is actually a mysterious checkerboard pattern filling up my um, behind my haunches. And it goes from one end, goes to full, then it goes down. But so far, I haven't noticed any hunger bars going down. And if I were sprinting right now, like sprint jumping, it would have gone down. This is still pretty quick. So, honestly, this does not seem to consume, consume food. If it does, it's like an insignificant amount. So, know that the gyrodyne is very efficient. Although it is hard to break, I must say. Yeah, it took me quite a bit to punch that up. Okay, next, go into the airship. Check the airship fuel efficiency. So, you'll notice... I try to start that engine, doesn't start. So we'll put in first, put in one fuel. Now you'll notice that the engine isn't actually fully powered. There we go, the propeller's fully powered. So just one, one wood block. Oh man, that went down. I thought it, I thought I'd be able to visibly see how fast it goes down. I think it runs at the same time. It doesn't have like a visual to it, but the same amount of ticks that it would if it were in a furnace. So it should be just about done now. Yep. So then if I put in a coal block or a coal, sorry, not a coal block should run for a significantly longer time. Around... Uh, actually, I can use this measuring distance so we can go coal black, coal block, will get me a certain amount of distance far. Oh, stop going forwards. As you can see, with one coal block, you can go pretty far. It doesn't have a visual indicator. It does tell me I'm, I'm low on fuel, so I'll put in a kelp. And now this one, I should be able to fly all the way back, plus some. So it does look like, depending on the type of fuel you use, depends how efficient it is. So far, it looks like it correlates with the furnace uh, smelting speed. So if it smelts for one and a half blocks, like a plank wood or a log, then it'll also smelt or keep your, your plane afloat for that long. The kelp does 20 blocks, coal does 8, and lava smelts for 100. So you'll, it's good to remember that. So if you're going on a long trip, you can put one lava bucket in, and it will power it for like a very long time. Now, I am going to see if that power goes away after a while. So for example, we know that there is power in there. But let's say I get out and I wait a bit. I'll come back to this. But let's put in the biplane. Let's see if the fuel efficiency is the same. So put in one oak log. Oh, it looks like one oak log isn't even enough to get it off the ground. 
So you got You got to be using good fuel if you want to be using. Yeah, there we go. So one pole can get that this biplane flying. Just know that this is a regular biplane, no upgrades on it, so it's a bit slower, a bit harder to control. It does move a lot faster. Oh, but I'm already low on fuel. So this time we'll put it in the lava bucket. Now this should power us for a very long time. As you can see, the lava bucket works. Just it out, puts an empty bucket after that. But it looks like the biplane does consume more fuel than the airship as it moves further. So we'll get out. Airship should. Okay, it's still got fuel. So we'll wait for a bit. And next, let's go back into creative. Let's grab some rockets. Oh, caps locks on. We'll grab firework duration 3, 2, and 1. Go back into survival. And now here, we put in one flight duration 1 rocket. I just need to figure out how to use it. Okay, let me check my controls. And then... We'll come back and see how to use that. All right, I'm in the controls menu. It looks like rocket boost is default set to B. And use weapon mount is default set to right button. Up is default set to space. But just know that up is also to get the propeller going on most of them. And this is to show that inverted controls there. So if you wanted to, you could switch these around. And that would change the, the flight of the biplane. So now I'll get back in and I'll just press B right off the start. And you can see I can press B and immediately launch. Now I'll put in some flight duration 3 rockets. And you do fly pretty far, it does add a significant boost to it. I'll put in some, some fuel for now. As you can see, if I use the... I am flying pretty quick. It would be about the same speed as an Elytra. It's just this one's a lot more consistent with it. Good control. You can turn pretty quickly and control. It's just a little difference between... Elytras are obviously good for rockets, but this one, you don't have to use rockets. It's the thing. If I wanted to travel pretty far pretty quick, I could be using rockets. I could be boosting. But also, I could just be... I could take my hands off the controller and just let... The, 63 dried kelp blocks fly me and that's 20 20 blocks each a little bit faster because the plane uses fuel pretty quick but yeah then i can fly back as you can see i'm already out of render distance of the start like that is that's that's an abandoned village i went off course somewhere i need to get no uh there we go, I'm finally getting that Z value going down, but this... Like, I fly pretty quick, like, if we look at the blocks going down... It's like... One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Well, it's like, just over ten seconds to go travel a hundred blocks. I wasn't traveling in a completely straight line there, but... That means that... 10 seconds, 100 blocks, it's around 10 blocks per second, which is pretty fast. Or 10 meters per second, sorry. Elytra is normally around 30, I think. So Elytra will be a little bit faster. This one's a nice little thing to have, though. It's just fun. Now, the biplane, I think, is actually a lot harder to break. It feels like breaking a boat on bedrock. Yeah, and you can just pick it back up. Uh, and this still has fuel. So it does look like the fuel carries over. It remembers its last fuel from last time. So yeah, just to re re recap here. 
there is five crafting components. There is nine aircraft upgrades. Be sure to experiment those. And remember, it's only one aircraft upgrade type per aircraft. So you can't have multiple enhanced propellers. You can only have one. There's five total aircrafts and four aircraft weapons, although one of them isn't a weapon. It is just a telescope for your aircraft. All right. Thank you all for checking out my air Immersive Aircrafts mod review. This is available for Ford and Fabric. The re latest release is on 1.20.1. .1. I use Fabric so that I can use my replay mod. I, love, I just love replay mod. I haven't tested it on Forge, but the assumption is it works the same. All right. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about this mod or if you want another mod covered.